Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Here we have that arcade power supply unit I bought. And I uh, say it's worth about £10, but I paid 20 just because that's me. And I'm going to take it apart because I want to I want to put it together. I'm going to test it and I'm going to put its American power lead with the uh, one of my adapters. We'll do that. But before I do, I just want to have a quick look inside because you never know. Sometimes there might be some sort of detritus or something out there just to do a bit of a gotcha and that'll blow up instantly if it's something that you're not quite sure on the quality so it doesn't hurt to just undo the screws and let's have a quick look just a little quick a quick look it doesn't have to be much more than a cursory glance but just let's just see what's in there make sure there's nothing funky hanging about like a ball of bloody steel wool or something so it looks, I'm just trying to work that out. So you've got these two halves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, have I just taken out? What? It's an odd, odd little, dis yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how it's constructed. It's got loads of these sort of metal tangs and I assumed some sliding, sliding parts. Yes, it is a sliding part, but you need this last screw off. It's weird when they start doing this metal origami. Can you imagine this with folded sheet metal like this? Just how weird and complicated it is to design it. But I guess they only had to do it once back in the 50s and just sort of replicate it over and over again. So I was just about to take a big blow over this just, just to let you know, yes, there's a sort of weird dustiness there. And there's this sort of mylar sheet that is got powders on it. <laughs> it's got powders on it. I don't really want to speculate what those powders are, but let's let's leave that in the bottom where it belongs. Just have a look at the PCB. Come with me, come with me. We'll just zoom in a bit closer. It's looking a bit crusty, musty, but not too um, bad. I'm already I'm going to pimp it already. I've seen something, and I'm going to enhance this design. I'll show you that in a second. Let's see if I can just get it out of this part of the shell. It's got a big heatsink held in by these two dome head screws looking for the word there thinking they're not pan head dome head self tappers come with me on a world of pure imagination crustiness is a bound it'll make you sigh if your PCB Oh no, oh no, oh no, I touched my soldering iron off this bag and now it's covered in plastic. Smoking. Let me clean that. Right, my singing there had distracted me from what I was up to. Now it's reasonably clean. So let me tell you what I'm about to do. Zoom right in, right in close. All of the tracking seems to have been tinned, solder tinned, yeah? Sometimes this is done to thicken the effective, um, increase the effective current handling of the track. So you can see this track here starts off quite fat and then it sort of thins out. And a lot of other tracks like that, but if you turn them slightly, if it'll focus, you'll see their dome because they've got a layer of solder. And then I've just noticed this one doesn't have none on it. So I thought, well, let's just do that because to be honest, if you see like here, you see how that, that's way thicker than the actual tracking of the PCB. So that increases its capacity markedly i mean this is that track is just going to this transformer here right there so it'll pay to do that why not they wouldn't normally bother doing it themselves if it didn't need to be done so i just think that's probably a quality issue it shouldn't be too tricky so i'm just applying solder directly there just running the ball of solder across and i kind of expect there you go i just kind of expect that ball of solder to hit something where it's going to catch and then be a sort of dome of solder all the way so you've not really got any way of making that thicker because there's only so much surface here i suppose if you just dab it like that oh the dabbing works i'm going to drag it across here yeah good boosh so that's the first bit all done do the trick absolutely nicely. So general observations though, the board does appear to have a sort of slight crustiness. And it's difficult for me to clean because again, I haven't invested in a bloody another tin of flux clean. So drip a bit on there. And I'm just gonna use my 
sort of, you know, tailor's brush or whatever you want to call it to whisk, whisk, whisk that filth away. Oh, a bit of fluff there. What was I? Oh, that's cobwebs. I saw a bit. I saw a cobweb the other day, just sort of dangling, and I sort of oh, whisk that away. My whisky brush, and uh, now it's just catching on everything, and it's really tenacious. I don't know what cobwebs are made of. I think are they genuine silky material because they are actually quite tricky to remove when they decide to be. So yeah, now it's looking a bit tidier, cleaner. I'm tilting at this angle just so I get a better view. There really isn't any observable issues with the tracking apart from that. The pads look okay. So it's probably been through a QA test. I think it would fire up and pass one of those. Let's look through the sort of top half here. That is pretty shonky donkey donkey. Bit of a crusty LED there, isn't it? Don't you think? And look at that. There's no and fat. It's got so much rust on it, it's like, it's floppy, basically. It's just, that's terrible. Look how weak it is. Not good. But am I really going to fix that? Probably not. I'm just going to take care when I put it back in. But I'd really like to see on things like LEDs to have some sort of heat. Oh, you know what? I can't live with that. <laughs> I can't live with it. That's just how anal I am today. I'm just going to take off one of these legs, sorry, this outer leg that's the easiest one to do. Oh, it's so rusted. How can you get an LED leg so rusty like that? That is odd. Oh, and I tell you what, if you haven't yet, whoa, go out and invest in a box of heat shrink. Um, I use it so much. I mean, I'm not, I'm not joking with you. I use so much of this and it really adds that level of permanency to your repair. You know, it just makes whatever you're doing that little bit more proper. And as such, you're more likely just to be satisfied and respect the job you've done. So if you have any self-respect at all, and I know I've only got limited self-respect, um, just go out and buy some of this. You will really you'll really feel you're doing a better job of it. And look, that's all you have to do on this one, just to show you. You know, I've just popped a bit on that, chucked it on the leg. And if you don't have hot air blow, I'll just show you now. You can just get a lighter, run it back and forth a couple of times. There you go. And it's all shrunk up, all shrunk up like the uh, honey I shrunk the kids with Rick Moranis. And you don't really um, hear about old Rick Moranis anymore. I don't know. Kids were watching Ghostbusters earlier, and I was sort of reminded of him. And uh, that's about it, you little shop of horrors. Feed me Seymour! Get that LED sorted out. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering if this was actually, wasn't probably stored in the best of places. Again, say, we're talking about 10 quid power supply. I know I said I paid more, I did pay more, but you get what you get. There's a, a nice little electrolytic here, a C7 that's missing. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, I wonder what it was for. I, I could have, could pop that in actually, looking at it in circuit. It's just um, across a couple of power lines. So if you've got any idea on a value, we could do that. I'm looking at some of the other ones. A uh, thousand microfarad, yeah. I mean, that would be probably a bit big, a thousand. But what's that next one there? Uh, 470, yeah, maybe a 500. Could pop one in there and there's a couple of parts you've got a 110 and a 240 volts we'll make sure it's 240 volts now but when i actually attach it to the hardware i'll be uh, switching that to 110. now there was some compound on there but we can see that compound has since disappeared i do have quite a lot of compounds you've got your arctic monkeys and then you've got your generics i'm going to put on some generics there more than enough i should think Incidentally, I don't think there's much difference between the generics and the fancy, so if you're buying, uh, you might save yourself a bit of money and buy a massive tube. So we'll pop that over there, just, just like that. And then attempt to find those soft tappers. That went do lally, as they're likely to when you leave them on your desk among 
your detritus. Right, good. I think we're cooking now. February 2017. So this is a recent build. I mean, this is a not an old item. It, it sort of it hasn't been hanging around for very long, but it's just not been hanging around in a very good way. Oh, that's not tightening anymore. Be careful of those self tappers. They've 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 gonna munch themselves now. If I try to crank that anymore, they'll just strip. So we'll leave that. Is a fuse, by the way, a little three amp fuse in there, so at least you know you're sort of protected-ish. Keep that mylar thing in place. Pop it all together. Let me see how that LED um, went in. That was quite an odd little creature, the way it was sort of dangling. Just sort of aligns with the whole lucky dip, really, whether or not it goes in. This whole PCB should just slide in from the end, yes. There is a locking mechanism that keeps that PCB in place. <laughs> so look at this, it's a, there's a docking sequence for this LED so you can just keep adjusting it. Ah, oh, yes, LED is in place. Tell you what, that's some skills that is. Skills that pay the bills. So I'm gonna hook this up and we're gonna measure the voltage output on it, the 12 volts minus all that bloody stuff. What's interesting is that they have this adjustment for the 5 volt rail so you can really dial it in to your equipment. Yeah, so that's what that knob was on the end. So the idea being, of course, that you're going to want to make sure it's precisely 5 volts out. But I'm going to try to do it on the bench, but without load, I, I kind of wonder what it's going to do. It might just show low. And there is something else. In the last video when I was looking at this, I was asking people what the FG was. FG apparently stands for frame ground. So all that is here is ground as in a mains ground. So that wasn't the power on reset that I need for my arcade machine. So do you remember I did make a power on reset circuit out of a booby board? I'm still gonna have to hook that up. But that's fine because as I covered, I'm going to put it all inside this case, this enclosure, because I don't want anybody putting their fingers on it. So I might, actually, I might do a different mounting solution for it. So it might actually mount it in a totally different way and have all the cables come out to the end. But I'll be able to fit everything in there. There won't be any problem at all fitting that in there. What, well, I, what I do wonder about though, there is fuses for all the minus um, 12 volts, plus 12 volts, and all the other power rails on the original, but you don't get that on this. So. If you, if you value your equipment, you might want to add additional inline fuses. First things first then, let's get the old power on, live and neutral. Now we have no real way of knowing what's live and neutral on a two pin system, so I'm guessing it doesn't really matter too much. Do, 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 do. And I don't like these, the fact that they don't even have plastic cover over these rails, so if you're using them again, be very careful in how you're going to mount this so that you can't get your fingers in accidentally because there's nothing worse than moving a piece of equipment only to find your fingers have just touched all of these bloody things and you've electrocuted yourself. Let's see how we're going to test this then. I'm going to put this up like that. Just going to hook up now my mains adapter. We want it to UK plug wherever it resides. So. US to UK plug, that's ready to go. Clear up some of this mess because we are playing with mains and I am always a little bit slightly more cautious with it. Now we just don't really want this falling down so we're just gonna be very, I think, it's stable enough. We'll just be cautious with that. And I'm about to plug it in. Check the voltage again, it is set to 220 volts. So here goes nothing, three, two, one, contact. LED is on and that's bloody bright. That's a seriously bright LED. That's seriously bright. So remember now, these contacts here on the bottom are mains level, do not touch them. In fact, I'm almost reluctant to touch the bloody case because I just don't know. In fact, let's put our meter on AC. I can't think of something suitably grounded. Actually, I've got my oscilloscope just sitting up there. That's got a grounded chassis and we're gonna put my probe onto the chassis ground, like so. 
and I'm going to put my probe onto the ground of this unit to see what's floating. <laughs> There's a 17 volts potential difference, allegedly. And let's check it on this one. 45 volts. Very strange, isn't it? And then the live. 10 volts. I'm curious about these readings here, to be honest with you. And then we're going to check between live and neutral. And there's our 243 volts. So yeah, it doesn't look like the case is live. Thank gosh for that. So we're going to go through ground and plus 5 volts. So you can see my meter there, hopefully. In fact, it's pretty much dead on 5. Oh no, sorry, what's this? This is 5 volts at 15 amps. Yep, okay, it's pretty much dead on 5. And then this is the minus 5 volts. That's not good. That's coming in at minus 4.4. And then we have the plus 12 volts, and that's 11.6. I do realise that I'm covering up the whole bloody thing. Right, there we go. So I don't know. Let's If we hold the probes, put that there. Oh, I can't see it. This, this is no good, is it? No good. Let's put the probes between the plus 5 and the ground. Yep, and I'm going to very gingerly hold those. Right, so you can see that there. We're going to try adjusting this adjuster to see which, if it does anything. Oh, it does. Wind it up. Keep going. Well, that's pretty tight. That's a tight five for me. Can't complain about that. Let's just see if it did anything to this sort of minus rails here so we've got the ground and the minus 5 volts hmm it's, it's looking pretty sucky actually on the negative rails isn't it i mean it's probably within tolerance i mean how close do you need to be but yeah not amazing let's put it that way these aren't amazing power supplies but they all suffice they're cheap and nasty they probably do the job <sighs> i guess i'm probably just going to risk my equipment my valuable cocktail machine with one of these but I'm definitely not going to use this power <laughs> so there hmm I wonder what would happen if you just switch them to 110 when you run it if it would just blow something up or if it just all the outputs would just go mental either way I'm not really going to try that I think it's ready to go in the machine so yeah hope that's of some use to you um, gives you an idea though of the configurability of those rails and just a, one last thing before I uh, disappear I mean this is the old unit and you can see I've removed this is the connector to talk to it and it has a 5 volts plus 5 volts adjuster here where my thumb is but it's also got a minus 5 and a plus 12 so it's every rail there on this board actually is adjustable so that's that was quite nice really I can't remember what was wrong with this either Maybe it was serviceable, who knows? Either way though, you know, look at that. It is a bit old, old school, old school. So please uh, comment down below, uh, like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thanks for watching and please be careful when you're messing with stuff like this. Safety first kids. I found that the grand I was using um, which is the chassis of the oscilloscope, which is supposed to be plugged into this, isn't plugged into this. So that's what will be giving some of those weird uh, voltagey grounding readings. So had that unit actually been um, dodgy, and that its uh, casing was live, um, a test against this would prove nothing, and touching it would result in your immediate electrocution. So uh, yeah, interesting one. Make sure things like this, these little details, don't pass you by.